हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल लेट्स ग्रो आई होप यू आर वेरी वेल एंड डूइंग ग्रेट इन योर लाइफ सो टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज कैनेडीज सेल्ड थ्योरी एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द अजम्पन लिमिटेशन एंड वॉट इज द स्टैंडर्ड डिजाइन प्रोसीजर टू डिजाइन एनी ऑफ द अनलाइंड कैनाल यूजिंग कैनेडीज सिल्ट थ्योरी I hope you will find this video very informative so stay connected with this video so let us start our discussion without wasting any time RG Kennedy investigated canal system for 20 years and came up with the Kennedy's silt theory so the theory we are going to study here takes almost of 20 years of investigations to derive this complete theory so you can see and understand that how much time it will take to derive all these formulas and how many observations are made in this time period the theory says that the silt carried by flowing water in a channel is kept in suspension by the eddy current rising to the surface so what does it mean that whenever the water flow in a canal or in a channel so there are some eddies which are generated near to the bed surface and these turbulence or eddies which are generated near the surface of bed these are helpful to kept all the particles in suspension as you can see here in this figure that whenever this water is flowing in this canal there are some eddies or turbulence near the boundary of the channel and these turbulence are called as eddies and these eddies generate some of the force which act upward in the direction which help to the silt or sediments kept in sus suspension which is coming in this water and whenever we use kennedy's theories kennedy's assume that these eddies or turbulence are caused by the bed level only there is no component of eddies are developed by this slope side there is no eddies formation on the slope side only the eddies or turbulence are caused by the bed of the canal only the vertical component of the eddy current tries to move sediment up whereas sediment wet tries to bring it down so suppose there is a sediment you can assume this red pointer as sediment so on this particle there is one force which is act upward in the direction which is called as force of eddies or force due to turbulence and the other force which act in the downward direction is the self weight of the this sediment or this soil particle which will act downward so if these both forces are balanced then this silt or this sediment is will be in the mode of suspension and it will not settle in the channel therefore if adequate velocity available to create eddies so as to keep the sediment just in suspension silting will be prevented so if we want that there should be no silt should be deposited silting means no deposition of the sediment means there should be no silt should deposited in this bed silting is also called as the aggradation aggradation means the same term deposition of the sediment so if we want that there should not be any silting or there should not be any accumulation or deposition of the sediment in the bed then in this channel there is certain velocity which should be maintained so that whatever eddies will form with that help of velocity will kept all the particles in suspension now we are going to start discussion with the assumptions 
regarding the Kennedy's silt theory. So let's cover it one by one. The eddy current is generated because of the friction between flowing water and the roughness of the canal bed. So we can see here in this figure that these eddies are caused due to the flowing water and whatever roughness of the bed is available there due to the undulation in the bed. There are small small uh, projected particles which cause the turbulent. The quantity of the supported silt is proportional to the bed width. So whatever quantity of silt is there which is supported by the turbulence it is directly proportional to the width of the canal. The theory is applicable to those channels which are flowing through the bed consisting of sandy silt or same grade of silt only. So whenever we want to apply this Kennedy's silt theory or then the Kennedy's assume that this theory is applicable only for the sandy silt. Now we are going to start discussion with the critical velocity based on Kennedy's silt theory. So in the beginning we have discussed that there should be a minimum velocity such that there should be no accumulation or no deposition of the silt in the canal. So this velocity is known as the critical velocity. Critical velocity is the mean velocity which will just make the channel free from silting and scouring. Silting and scouring means there should be no deposition of sediment and there should be no erosion of the sediment. Here we are using silt. So the channel, the design channel should be such that or the velocity in the channel such that there should be no erosion of the silt from the bed and there should be no deposition of the silt in the canal. The velocity is based on the depth of the water in the channel. The general form of critical velocity is as follows. So this velocity is dependent on the power form of the depth of the water in the canal. So V node is the critical velocity which is written as C into D raised to the power N where C and N are the constants which is found to be 0.546 and 0.64. These are based on the observation made in these 20 years. And D is the full supply depth as illustrated in figure. So D you can see here, D is the depth of the water, depth of full supply of water in any of the canal. Now if we put the value of C and N which is observed by the observation made in these 20 years then we will find this equation too which is V node equal to 0.546 into D raised to the power 0.64. Moreover equation 2 further improved upon realization that silt grade influences critical velocity. So a factor termed as critical velocity ratio introduced and the equation become as follows. So in this equation we have made some improvement that there is no term which take care of the silt grade because the silt grade is influenced by the critical velocity. So we have to introduce a factor such that it will account for the silt grade. So now in this equation we have introduced a new term which is m and m is the critical velocity ratio which is equal to the actual velocity denoted by v divided by the critical velocity v node and the value of m which is critical velocity ratio can be taken by this table. For coarser silt the value of m can be taken as 1.3 for sandy loam silt it can be taken as 1.2 for coarse light sandy silt it can be taken as 1.1 and for light sandy silt it can be taken as 1 means for light sandy silt the value of m is 1 
means the actual velocity and the critical velocity will remain same in case of light sandy silt so this is the standard silt available in the in this design now we will start discussion with the limitations of the kennedy's silt theory so in the kennedy silt theory we use trial and error method means there is no certain formulas which will directly give the design parameters like the breadth and depth of the channel so we will use trial and error approach and based on that we will optimize the design parameter of our canal there is no equation for bed slope assessment kennedy does not give any of the equation which will give you the bed slope the ratio of channel width b to its depth d has no significance in kennedy's silt theory the ratio of b by d does not introduce in the kennedy's silt theory or no significance has been made while deriving the theory there is not perfect definition for the silt grade and silt charge complex phenomenon of the silt transportation is not fully accounted and only critical velocity ratio m concept is considered sufficient so silt transportation in a open channel is very complex phenomena because of the variability of a large number of hydraulic and sediment parameters there are shear stress is acting on the particles and there are a number of approaches which are used but in this theory only the velocity parameter or critical velocity parameter is assumed and it is considered as sufficient now we are going through the procedure of canal design using kennedy's silt theory the following data should be available the discharge q should be known that how much discharge over canal should be able to carry the rugosity coefficient n which will be depends upon the type of soil available critical velocity ratio is it is also depends on the soil type and the values of m we have seen in previous slide and bed slope of the channel should be known because kennedy's does not provide any of the equation for the determination of bed slope so the bed slope should be available prior to the design the first one step is assume suitable full supply depth so initially we have to take a value of d which is the suitable supply depth which can be taken as ranging from 1 meter to 2 meter or based upon your observation or what uh, or on the quantity of the discharge so you can start your training initially by taking a value of full supply depth d then find the mean velocity by using kennedy's equation equation number 3 we have equation number 3 the value of m we are having with us based on the soil type value of d we have assumed so based on the value of d whatever we have assumed we can calculate the velocity of flow after that find the area of cross section by using continuity equation continuity equation is q is equal to a into v q is discharge a is cross section area and v is the mean velocity mean velocity we have calculated using the formula discharge is known to us and now the area of flow a can be calculated by equals to q divided by v discharge divided by the velocity now assume the shape of channel section with side slope 0.5 vertical and one horizontal so we have to decide the shape of the channel like we are designing a trapezoidal channel so in case of a trapezoidal channel assume the side slope as one horizontal to the 1.5 one horizontal to the 0.5 vertical now find out the value of base width of channel b as we have area with us flow of depth is known side slope is known 
so based on the formula area of a trapezoidal we can determine the best width of channel b then find the perimeter of the channel p which helps to find out the hydraulic mean depth of channel r now we are having the cross section of trapezoidal base width and depth and by using these three parameters we can calculate the perimeter of the channel trapezoidal channel which will sum up the two times of sloping side plus bed width and now we can calculate the hydraulic mean depth which is equal to a upon p area is known to us and weighted parameter is known to us so r is hydraulic mean depth a is the cross sectional area and p is the perimeter or weighted parameter of the section now finally calculate the mean velocity v using the cutters formula so we are using this cutters formula v is equal to 1 by n bracket 23 plus 0.00155 divided by s divided by the 1 plus bracket 23 plus 0.00155 by s into n divided by under root r into under root r s in this equation n is the rugosity coefficient which is based on the canal lining material and s is the bed slope in terms of 1 in n and value of n can be taken here so here we are designing the unlined canal so for earth material or general material the value of n can be taken as 0.0225 but in case of lined canal if it is a machinery type you can take the value of n as 0.02 and for the concrete lining you can take a value of n ranging from 0.01213 to 0.018 now in this equation value of n is known to us r is known to us and the slope of the canal is known to us so based on this equation we can calculate the velocity of flow now both the values of v computed using equation 3 which is here and v computed employing equation 6 which is here it should be must be same means the whatever velocity we have calculated here should be same as the velocity we have calculated here in case of any discrepancy change the value of d and again do the same calculation unless you reach a optimized solution so otherwise repeat the above procedure by assuming another value of d generally the trial depth is assumed between 1 meter to 2 meter as i have told earlier if the condition is not satisfied within this limit then it may be assumed accordingly so if you are taken uh, 10 or 12 trial and you are not reaching to the optimized solution then you can change the value of d generally you have to increase the value increase the depth and let us see whether these velocity are approaching to each other or not if they are not approaching to each other they are diverting to each other then reduce the depth and you can reach at the optimized solution i hope you find this video very informative if you really like this video you can hit that like hit that like button subscribe our channel let's grow thank you so much to watch this lesson till the end happy learnings with let's grow family thank you bye bye take care